as always she standing on solid ground hello this is kim with standing on solid ground i am your host of this motivational and inspirational podcast and today's in the bible elisha Now, we all have read the story at one time or another, or at least heard the story of Elijah and Elisha. Now, Elijah was from Gilgal, and Elijah had traveled to Bethel, where Elisha had followed him. And he asked him to, you know, tarry here until he does whatever God has asked him to do. But Elisha was not going to do that. He was going to follow Elijah wherever he went. And as time had went on, where wherever he stopped, he stopped in Jericho. He asked Elisha to stay there and tarry. Elisha said, "No, wherever thy go, I'm going with you." And to you know, until he leaves that he did not want to miss out on whatever Elisha was doing. Well, um, as Elijah was traveling, Elijah was not that far behind him. Wherever he went, that's where, where Elisha was. Elijah also had a mantle that he wrapped together and smoke the waters to walk across uh, on dry land. And you know, this was very interesting to me because I did not know that the waters were smoked more than once to walk across to the other side on dry land. And this was very interesting to me. And this is why it's so important for me to study the Word of God. Well, they walked across on dry land to the other side and so elijah finally asked elijah what is it that you want from me what is it your desires because it 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 seems like everywhere i go you're there and when i ask you to tarry you follow me so what can i do for you in so many words and so elijah said i pray thee let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Now that is awesome. That someone's life was so of great value to someone else. That they want a double portion. And if you think about it. All the time you will hear people say I wish I had money like that. Or I wish I can sing like that. Or I wish I can travel like that. You, because they're looking at someone else's life. And they're wanting or desiring to have that life for themselves. Where in this case, Elisha was wanting what Elijah had. And he wanted a double portion. Well, of course, you know, Elijah explained to him, you know, you ask such a hard thing. Nevertheless, when I am taken from thee, meaning when God comes and get me, it shall be so unto thee, God, but if not, it shall not be so. In other words, if it's not God's will, it's not going to happen because he cannot give that double portion to Elisha. But God can. And if it's God's will, then let it be so. And it came to pass, and and after they talked, that behold, there came a chariot of fire and a ho- and horses of fire. And they parted them asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind unto heaven. Now this is found in 2 Kings. 11 if you're interested in reading that portion or where I found that and Elijah saw it saw it and he cried my father my father the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof 
and he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. And I remember explaining to you or giving you a definition of renting one's clothing. They tore them off. He tore them off. And I believe in also the understanding of what I am beholding with renting the clothing. You're tearing off the old so you can put on something new. Because you're not going to put on torn clothes. I've never known anybody to put on torn clothes unless it's old clothes, you know, like like an old shirt or something that you just wear and wore and wore and wore until it's just tearing apart, almost falling apart. And you, it's one of your favorite clothing. You can't throw it away for whatever the reason. You can't throw it away. That's something different. I'm talking about clothing where it's not made to wear anymore you can't put it on anymore and if you sew it up it's not going to look right that's what i'm talking about and i believe that spiritually it means taking off the old and putting on something new and this is what elisha did once he saw elijah lifted up where he could not see him anymore he rent his clothes in two pieces and he took up that mantle that Elijah allowed to fall from him and went back and he stood by the brook, the bank of Jordan and he, he, he spoke and he said and he took that mantle of Elijah that fell from him and he smoked the water and he said where is the Lord God of Elijah and when he he also has smitten that water. They parted hither and thither. And Elijah went Elijah went over. So there is the double portion. Now, a lot of people would say, well, that's just one thing. Yes, that's just one thing. But there were a lot of things that Elisha had did that Elijah had already conquered and as we go further along and we read and we discover the things that Elisha had done it, it, it would be amazing it would be absolutely amazing to see the similarities between these two men and you know there were 50 strong men that Elijah were um, that Elisha had had come in contact with, and the spirit of the Lord had taken him up and cast him, you know, cast him upon some mountain or into some valley, and he said, "Ye shall not sin." And this was something in um, Second Kings sixteen, and they said unto him, "Behold, now there be with thy." servants 50 strong men let them go we pray thee and seek thy master lest least pre uh, pre adventure the spirit of the lord have taken him up and cast him upon some mountain and into some valley and he said ye shall not sin and when they urged him till he was ashamed he said send they sent therefore 50 men and they sought three days but found him not and you know in other words they were requesting to find they were looking you know they were searching and they were looking and I believe that they were probably looking for Elijah they were looking for him and I believe that they were looking for him to do him harm and I believe that these were Jezebel's men and they couldn't find him. they they didn't because Elisha already knew he was taken up well Elisha also had a experience of a child being sickly unto death and as Elijah did he cried out unto God and he sought 
you know, saw God's face. And he asked that life be restored unto this child. And it was. And there are times when we will mimic someone else. Now, not purposely, but in God's will, this was done. Because a double portion, meaning you're going to do whatever the person did before you and another portion for yourself. So whatever that person had, had completed before, that will you be able to do and also what God has empowered you to do. Think about it. Jesus said all these things that I have done, ye can do also and even greater. I believe that that's where he, he was referencing to that double portion that Elisha had received from God after the ascension of Elijah. And we want to be able to have that power. Now, I don't want to mimic myself after anyone else on this earth. I want to mimic myself after God. And the reasons why I want to mimic myself after God and after Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, is because I know Jesus did not make any mistakes. If I try to mimic myself after man, and we all have fallen short of the kingdom of God, we all have sinned. So we cannot, we cannot be so... And, and pound, I'm trying to find the right word, so determined to follow after another man or another woman. We need to follow after God. Now the things, and I do recall where it says, follow me. And I believe this was Paul when he said, follow me only as I follow Christ. Because he too had made his mistakes. He too had sinned against God. He had fallen short. And when we fall short, we don't want to mimic our lives or have a double portion of someone's life because we don't know what kind of life they lived. Now, in the case of Elisha, Elisha was with Elijah every step of the way until the ascension that he was going back until the father. So he knew the life that Elijah lived. We don't know the lives of everybody else on this earth. And that is why we should not want to take something away from someone else and ask God for a double portion because we don't know what we're asking for. We do not know what we're asking for. And when we ask God for something, let it be only after Christ. Because we know that we know that we know that he lived a perfect life. That's why he was crucified. Because of a perfect life. Not because of sin, but because of a life that he had lived on this earth. Now, Elijah, uh, Elisha, had also come across a, a handmaid made, and her vessels were empty. She did not have any food. And you know, Elisha told her to go and gather up all the vessels that she could and shut yourself up in your sons behind closed doors. And God bless. He filled her vessels. If you think about Elijah, Elijah told a widow woman to make him a cake. And that her oil, her, her cruise of oil will never fail. This is this double portion. So there are things that Elijah did, that Elisha had followed in his footsteps. But then there were things that I did not read that Elisha had come across. 
where these little boys or kids were calling him bald head. You know, they were mocking him, making fun, you know, bald head, bald head. And I'm like, wow. I said, you know, thinking about it, kids can be kind of cruel. You know, they can be very, very cruel, uh, especially to older people or if it's something that um that is noticeable about someone yes they will pick fun and start saying nasty things and you know a, a second kings 2 23 and 24 and he went up from the thence unto bethel and as he was going up by the way there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said unto him go up thou bald head go up thou bald head and he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord and there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tore forty and two children of them wow now, I don't recall anything like that, that Elijah had did. I don't recall of anything where something that of that great magnitude, that two she-bears just came out of nowhere and tear 40 and two children of them, 42 kids. And that's, that is gruesome that's gruesome but that also can be misuse of power as well I don't know if it was misuse of power because these are children and these were you know children have ways of attack and although they may not, you know, other children may not want to do that anymore because this is a man of God. I don't know if God was pleased or displeased with that. Sometimes we can misuse our power. Now, if God allowed the bears to come out, there's nothing we can say about it. We can't challenge it. But all in all, there are things that are like Elijah that Elisha had done and there were things unlike Elijah, Elijah that Elisha was able to do. We need to be careful about what we ask for. Now the power of Elijah, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as we're doing things according to God's will and according to God's purpose. But when we start being bigger than what we should be, we can get ourselves in trouble. Daily, I ask God to keep me humble, to keep me steady on that solid rock that he has prepared for me. Because we can get too much of ourselves and thinking that we're doing things for ourselves and we're not doing anything, it's all God. It's God's from the beginning and it will be God's to the end. No one can take it away but God. And no one can give it to me but God. Anytime we mimic anybody, we need to be careful and make sure that it's good and acceptable unto God. Because if it's not, what we will do, we will become full of ourselves and when we become full of ourselves, we, be, we be, have less of God within our being. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that because we can find ourselves in a situation where God may not be there for us. Now, can you imagine if a tribe of people were coming after him, wanting to kill him or seek after him? Because Jezebel, if she was still living at that time, that she was going to chase Elisha down, seeing how she couldn't get Elijah, I'm going to go after Elisha. And he went to smoke 
that water so he can run and it didn't open. See, God can take that power away just as well as he have given it to you. And that's what I don't want to happen. I don't want to lose that edge that I have with God. You know, I feel like that I'm barely hanging on. But God has a hold of me. I'm barely hanging on because his hand is so big. And I can slip up at any time. But God has a good, a great hold on me. And he's not going to let me fall. As long as I keep my focus and my heart with him. To do his will. Now Elijah had did great things. He had traveled. He had blessed. He had cursed. He had he have completed many things that may have been good in God's eyes and it may have been a little disturbing but God is the final judge we can't make judgment on God we can't make judgment on people God does and although having a double portion of what Elijah had sometimes that double portion can be too much and we need to know what we're asking for when we get it. And we need to know how to handle it. Because if we don't handle it well, that punishment can come down on us. So, I am so thrilled that I am able to speak about Elijah. Because that double portion, we do see similarities in between Elijah and Elisha. Unfortunately, the double portion did not include the way that he departed from this earth. With Elijah, God lifted him up. With Elisha, however, he passed on of old age and he was buried accordingly. So we can ask God for things, but we may not get everything. Because, see, I would want the double portion to the point of being able to be ascended like Elijah was. I took the full portion, meaning I want everything that Elijah had. But something could have kept him from having even that part of his life where he could have been lifted up by a chariot of fire. Again, Elijah in the Bible. I hope that you enjoy this is Kim with Standing on Solid Ground. You have yourself a wonderful and blessed day.